What's going on guys, it's Soccer Central 3 here and welcome to what's happening in soccer right now. Now, I'm very, 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 very sorry, sorry for um, not um, uploading anything for the past um, three, four weeks I think. Um, I've been a little bit busy, but, you know, I just haven't had a lot of time to, um, upload. But, um, now I'm back, and if you can hear stuff in the background, it's like cars going past. It's really annoying, I know, but I can't stop that. Oh, well, at least I don't think. So, um, these are the things that I'm going to be just running over, um, what's happening right now, um, just in soccer. So, um, first, Man U vs and, um, Liverpool pre-season matches now. Obviously... Teams play pre-season, and um, a few Premier League um, teams have been going down to Asia, and um, Man U and Liverpool both came to Australia, and um, Man U versed um, the A-League All-Stars, which is the Australian League, so the best, well it wasn't actually the best, it was a pretty crap team, but they were probably the only people in the country at the time that could play, so um, it ended 5-1. Um, but it was a really good um, match to watch because I think it was probably one of the first times I'd watched Manchester United like live, um, and there, there was a, I think it was about an eighty thousand crowd for that match because all the stadiums in Australia are really big, but then in England they're like fifty thousand, so probably one of the biggest crowds I'll ever play against. Um, so, who, uh, the person that really impressed me in that match was Jesse Lingard, and um, I'd never heard of him before, and um, when I saw the lineups, I thought that they must have got it wrong because Lingard's a goalkeeper, but it was Lingard, in fact, and uh, he scored two, so did Welbeck, and Van Persie scored one at the end, which was a pretty crap goal, I've got to say, he had was one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. And he smashed it straight into him. And they did a few more passes and he got the goal in the end. But Lingard's and Welbeck's goals were way better. And um, But it was a good match. You know, like, um, you, could, or, uh, you could easily see that Manchester United outclassed um, the um, All-Stars. But um, it was good to watch, you know. Um, yeah. So now moving on to second match, which is Liverpool preseason, and um, they versus Melbourne Victory. So um, the the team in my city. So um, that was at the MCG, and if you don't know what that is, it's the Melbourne Cricket Ground. And yes, they usually play cricket and AFL there, but because there was so much of a wanting for this match, they played it at the MCG and. That's got a capacity of 100,000 people, and there was about 95,000 people that went to the match. And also, that would be probably the biggest ever crowd of people ever going to play at. And um, this match was way more even. Um, I've got to say, Bob Vitry played really well. Like They kept possession for quite a bit, and um, before their first goal, Liverpool's first goal, which was scored by Steven Gerrard, which was a great goal. They were they hanged on to it. I think it was about five minutes and Liverpool didn't touch the ball for the whole time. But um, that was a really good goal. Gerrard faked it. It was like a switch through the middle. Gerrard faked it and went through. And uh, Allen, I think, brought it up, passed it through to Gerrard, and he just smashed into the bottom corner. And um, as I said, it was very competitive. Um, not a lot of other shots in between there. Um, another player that impressed me was Barini. He played really well. Um, especially in the second half, he got a few shots away. But he impressed me. And in around the 70th minute, they literally swapped the whole team. It was literally 10 substitutes. And um, then, like, Aspas and Mignolet and all the new signings and Suarez went on. But um, their forward line, Suarez, Aspas and... Uh, the new guy, Luis Alberto. Oh, stupid cars. Sorry about that. You know, I can't help that. Um, 
the there was too many back heels I thought like they were just like back heeling it around and um like they were just losing it all the time too fancy I reckon but it was a good match and it's great to see some more high quality teams in Australia which is great so now moving on to the next thing it's um FIFA 14 so um I think it was about two days ago um ultimate team um kind of screenshots you could say um, what the hell is that? Planes now. We've got cars, we've got planes. There's a few birds a few minutes ago. Far out, what's next? Freaking trains. So as I was saying, oh my god, far out. Um, new screenshots for V14, Ultimate Team. Um, and there's a mixed reaction. Like, not a lot of people like the crest style. As you can see, um, non-shiny, uh, the flat at the top. I don't know why, but I, I don't mind it because there's less lines and it's more like free and open. Um, but not a lot of people like it, but I, I think it's okay and everyone can get used to it as they would. But the new thing is the chemistry and I don't quite get that, but I guess it can help in the style of play that you want to uh, play to make it more realistic, um, so, it's, it's a, they had to make something new, you know, when there's a game, and they basically made it the best they can be, they have to add some new stuff, so, that was probably a good introduc uh, introduction, I don't know, um, but, um, they also, they, it was more, and, like, obviously the ratings were released, kind of, but they said that they're not final. And then I think it was about a day ago, or maybe even today, I'm not sure, the um, Ultimate Team trailer was released. And there was the menus, I like it, it looked cool. And it's, it's more connected, I think, and I like that, so I'm looking forward to it. And there's lots of connections through FIFA 12 and FIFA 13 if you have the same console, but... I don't know about that, so, you know. We'll uh, go on to transfers now. So, there's been a lot of transfers since I'd last uploaded, and I'm just literally going to go through them all. And, um, yeah, so, so first Premier League. Um, Aston Villa have got Sonogo, a young star striker. Supposed to be young. He played in the Under-20 World Cup for France. Um, they won, obviously, and then Aston Villa, they've got five signings, I think, all around about two, three million, none of them really big names. Cardiff, their only signing is uh, Andreas Cornelius. Now, um, he's from Copenhagen, they signed over 10 million, the Danish striker. Um, he looks to have a good future, and I reckon he's a uh, good um, youth, kind of, uh, I reckon he's, has, he's got a good future. And then now Chelsea. Um, so, obviously, Van Ginkel um, from VTC, um, 9.5 around about there. And uh, I reckon that's a good signing. Yeah, also, more youngsters, you know, that's good because when they're all old, you know, then you have some more players. And I reckon it's a good signing. Um, Christian Cuvas, now I don't know who this guy is. Chilean from O'Higgins, I don't know what team that is, 4 million, I'm pretty sure he's a winger, like 17 or something, um, yeah, that, that was another signing, and then Schwarzer, also, now, uh, I'm Australian, and I was very pleased with that as a Chelsea supporter, for free from full, which is awesome, and also Andre Sherrill, Sher so, um, there was, right at the start of the transfers, um, yeah, so Crystal Palace also getting a few signings, a uh, few, uh, they're basically all unknown. Everton getting a few players, um, one that I, I'm looking forward to is De La Fer, um, from Barcelona B, or the young Barcelona team. Um, and he's got a great future, I've seen a few videos of him, and he's an absolute star, like he's, he's gonna be the next, like, I reckon... Ronaldo, you know, the sort of that kind of player. And then they got Coney. I don't know why. He had a good season at Wigan, but seriously, he's like 29 or something. And they got another Wigan player, Alcaraz. It's like 30 as well. And then 
uh, Fulun. They got uh, Amorabita, the um, Venezuelan centre back. Now I know him, but they got him for free from Atletico Bilbao. They he was probably out of his contract, I reckon, because he's a good player. And they got Stakelberg, Obviously, that's probably why um, Schwarzer moved. He uh, there was uh, signs of him retiring actually, and. Um, yeah, that's um, been kind of uh, ruled out. So also Retha, who was on loan last season, so they've actually bought him now. And now Hull getting into the transfers. they got Figueroa, El Mohamedi. That's probably the only known names. And Liverpool, obviously, Aspas, Colo Torre, Luis Alberto, and Mignole. And Manchester City, some more signings. Obviously, they started with Fernandinho and Navas, and now they've got Jovic and Negredo. Now, um, Jovic was getting fought out between Chelsea and Man City. I reckon Jovic was more for Man City, but buying Negredo as well, like, I don't know, like, Navas, here, yeah, but Negredo, and it was it was more than Navas as well. That That's what really confuses me. Like, six million more. I think it should be opposite, because Negredo is... is I don't really know Negretto that much, and like, yeah, I don't know, but, um, it's just a bit, um, you know, unknown, uh, unknown, yeah, um, then we've got the Manchester United really been sitting back there, looking to get Fabregas, that's about it. Newcastle sitting back a bit as well. Norwich, the really impressed me. They've got Redmond, the youngster. Um, Gary Hooper, new um, strike from Celtic. Now that'll be, um, I reckon, Norwich are set for a great season um, with Hooper. Um, Wolfswinkel, they've got Olsen as well, and Fur, Leroy Fur. Um, I reckon they'll have a good season. I was predicting they were going to come um, last, but... Um, uh, obviously, uh, it doesn't look like it um, now. And then uh, Southampton, Lovren and Wyama from Celtic, two big signings. Um, Stoke, uh, not getting into it that much. Um, Sunderland got a few Jackarini that impressed in the Convergence Cup, but I'll talk a bit about that later. Um, Diakite, Altidore, big signing as well. And they got um, Minone from Arsenal as well. Swansea... Big signing is uh, Shelby and Boney um, from Vita C. Um, then some other small signings. Um, Tottenham, big signing Polinio, also impressed in the Confederations Cup. And Nice said Chadley, the uh, Belgian winger, the East by Twente. Then West Brom, they, they got Anelka, which is a big signing. And uh, West Ham just getting... Carol, and that's about it, the well-known well names. And Carol, even for 18, it's a bit overpriced. But um, I didn't think I was, this was going to go for so long, and that's why um, I'm probably going to have to split this up into two parts, because, as you can see, this already likes 12 minutes or something ridiculous like that. So I'll be finishing this video off. Well, maybe it might even have to be three, I don't know, because... I talk for a long time, you guys know that. So, um, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe. Um, well, um, my next video, please watch all my videos, my next video probably won't be the Beast Hall of Fame now. It'll probably be the second part in this, well, most definitely. And, um, comment, um, just stuff about transfers, stuff about if you saw the preseason matches or if the, what do you think about FIFA 14, stuff like that. Second part should be up, like, literally the same time as this, so. I'm sorry it's been so long. I thought I could get into one video, but obviously not. So, um, see you guys, um, and I'll see you in the second part of this video. See you guys. Bye.